Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to my uh, Halloween series and review. And I got another bonus in our review today. So last night I watched Maxine, uh, spelled with three X's, not just one. And I was originally going to make a post about it, but then I remembered that I that I wanted to plan, um, that I wanted to that I wanted to see this movie in theaters. And weird story. Uh, over the summer, my family took a vacation over to over in Colorado. And, uh, and we went, I think, on the weekend that Maxine released. So I decided, like, okay, I'll just see the movie when we get back. Well, we were only in Colorado for a week, and by the time we got back, the movie got pulled from theaters. And according to my local theater, uh, apparently not a lot of uh, people went to see it, so they pulled it. So basically... I had to wait months and months for the film to come out on Blu-ray and DVD. Uh, since that time, um, I saw other people who I review the film where they're talking about how disappointed uh, they were that like it wasn't a slasher or anything, that there wasn't a lot of horror, and basically I kind of knew what I was getting into walking into this film. Uh, which unfortunately colors uh, my opinion on it. Uh, but fortunately enough, because I knew what I was getting into, um, I don't really understand some people's criticisms of this film. Uh, like you have you have X, Pearl, and Maxine. All three of them are very different films with like varying degrees of horror in them. Uh, I'd actually argue that Maxine has more like uh, horrific scenes in the, uh, in that film than Pearl does, because even though Pearl has a few, like, slasher-esque kills in it, uh, it was more of, like, a psychological case study, kind of, of how Pearl became, like, the, the evil antagonist of, <clears throat> of, uh, the movie X. But anyway, uh, getting into the actual story of Maxine about how it take uh, about how it takes place at least ten years after the events of X, and Maxine Manx is trying to become uh, like a star and break out of the porn industry, um, and uh, she tries her luck with uh, horror movies. Uh, meanwhile, uh, meanwhile, like the the United States is threatened with uh, the Night Stalker murders. Uh, as well as uh, this new series of killings, which are uh, very personal to Maxine. Um, so, orig originally I was kind of hoping that this uh, that this would be a slasher film, which it, it isn't. Uh, it's more of a psychological uh, horror film and uh, kind of showcasing uh, um, Maxine, like, dealing with what happened uh, with X. Um, personally, I don't think that it goes far enough. Like, there's only, like, one or two scenes of Maxine thinking that she sees, uh, Pearl, or she has, like, these PTSD flashbacks of what happened at that ranch. Um, I do like, however, the flashbacks, um, they're shot and edited in a way where it looks like really old-school-style film, um... Where like I don't know I don't see a lot of uh, movies that like do that st uh, that choice for uh, flashback sequences. Uh, if there's uh, one thing that I could compare it to, it would probably be um, it would probably uh, be those sequences uh, in the Black Phone, where it gets uh, where the color gets almost muted and uh, the and the video itself becomes uh, grainy. Um, it, no, it kind of reminds me of uh, that, but not quite. But either uh, way, uh, I still think uh, that the film is a great uh, horror piece on its uh, own. Uh, really, the only knock I have against it is that uh, there weren't a lot of slasher kills. Uh, there weren't uh, a lot of kills in general up until, like, the climactic uh, uh, fight scene, I guess you could call it. Um... The, the characters, I think, are kind of great. Maxine, played by Mia Goth, is still uh, a fantastic uh, character. 
Uh, the fact that Mia Goth plays both Maxine and Pearl in this uh, trilogy is great. Um, uh, and the fact that uh, the director Ty West got um, got big star actors like Kevin Bacon and Giancarlo Esposito to join in in this film. Um, I thought that was a huge uh, accomplishment because those two are, you know, are great in just about uh, anything. The only, uh, the only uh, thing that I've really seen uh, Esposito in that I didn't really care for was Abigail, and that's only because of how small and minuscule his role was in that film. Um... The kills, even though they, even though there wasn't a lot until like the final climactic uh, scene, um, they're, nah, they're pretty you know, bloody and gory. Even though it's not slasher, there is one uh, sequence where the, uh, where the antagonist gets like a really bloody and brutal knife kill that does harken back to like uh, Friday the Thirteenth and Halloween, and then there's uh, this other scene that. Um, that involves a, um, that involves, uh, like, a car crusher, right? Which, even though it's not really a slasher kill or traditional slasher kill, like, it's still incredibly, uh, bloody. Uh, more, uh, more bloody than, like, than I've seen, uh, those kind of, uh, kills go. Um... Aside from that, like, it was, it was shot great. The editing uh, was pretty good. Like, I really liked the the 80s uh, callbacks, especially, like, um, that little split screen that uh, that the, uh, that they did in uh, the film. Because a lot of uh, movies from the 70s and, uh, and the 80s uh, did that. Um, the music uh, was nice. Uh, the electro synth. Kind of reminded uh, me of a lot of other 80s uh, throwback films, such as the Terrifier franchise. So that was always a welcome addition. Uh, really, aside from uh, what I've said already, the uh, the only other <laughs> the only other kind of thing that really bothered me uh, narrative wise was. Um, uh, that, that one kill I mentioned, the one that involves a uh, knife and it's very reminiscent of a slasher kill. Uh, the morning after, uh, Maxine, uh, Maxine visits at the crime scene, uh, because she doesn't know what's uh, going on. And she arrives just as the detectives are leading the, uh, are taking the corpse out of uh, the building. And it's covered in a linen sheet, right? And the minute the detective uh, sees Maxine... She lifts uh, the sheet to reveal who it is in an obvious uh, way to uh, to get at her. And I'm not, not I'm not a police officer or a detective, but I had uh, I gotta wonder in what world uh, in what world is uh, that acceptable for a, a police officer to uh, to lift, uh, the linen and reveal, and reveal a dead body to the public. Because, at, uh, to my knowledge, uh, they're supposed to do that in protocol to, like, in case, uh, it's somebody that the person knows, which in this case, Maxine did know who the, who the body, belong uh, who the body was. And they're trying to, like, mitigate damages that might cause to the public. So, I don't know, maybe, uh, maybe I'm uh, making a mountain out of a molehill, but I, I always thought that thing was so uh, weird that the detective uh, went out of her way to just show the bloody corpse to not only Maxine, but the entire public, uh, because it, because uh, immediately after it did cause an uproar, uh, with Maxine and the rest of the civilians, and it led to police officers holding Maxine back, but... Other than that, that this was a great uh, movie. Um, I was a little bit disappointed at first that uh, it wasn't a sla uh, that it wasn't a slasher like the first two films. Uh, but I do appreciate that Ty West went more with the psychological horror. Uh, there's definitely a physical uh, threat towards the end of the film, but uh, it was still very enjoyable uh, to watch. 
But that's it uh, for this review, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.